Hey. Oh, rocket chick. Roger. Hello there. This is one of those videos that I have not wanted to uh, to make. I want to tell you a story about something that happened the other night. A couple, an expat couple, well, actually, he was expat, she was a local, had gone out to the movies here in Monta. Uh, they came home, they came to visit some friends in the building that I live in. And then around midnight or so, they decided to go home. And down the street here from where I live, uh, in a fairly well-lit area, but a very um, unoccupied street, especially for that time of night, a street that I don't think I would go down uh, even myself, I, you know much less be a female and carrying a purse. You can imagine uh, this lady was robbed. A guy approached this couple as they were walking to his apartment. He showed her that he had a knife and she had she, she relinquished her purse to him and he took off running with it. Got away with her Cell phone, money, cedula, and everything else that she's carrying in her purse. The message is very clear, folks. And I've said this in some of my other videos, that if you are in a neighborhood in the middle of the night, here, I don't care if you're by yourself or with 10 people. I don't care how tough you think you are, guys. You, you can get robbed. If you walk down the street in the middle of the night, and you don't see anybody around, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place. You're in trouble. I know it sounds negative and it's doom and gloom, but it happens here a lot. There's a lot of poverty here, and there's a lot of people here that are desperate to feed their families. A lot of guys that want to feed their children, and they'll come out and, and take whatever you got in hopes that they can go and get some money for it and take care of their family. It happens in the United States, it happens in Australia, Great Britain, it happens all over the world. A lot of people are always concerned about what is crime like here in Monte. It's real. It happens here. It just, it definitely does. It happens here. There's no getting around it. So, you know, just use common sense. When you come here, use common sense. Don't go out wandering around in the streets of Monte in the middle of the night. They, they were close enough. They were probably a minute, maybe two minutes to his apartment from here. I think I would have taken a taxi. Would have cost a dollar and a quarter, maybe a dollar and fifty. Maybe at night it would have cost, would have cost twice that. But who cares? Your date wouldn't lose your purse. That happened here, and I just wanted to share it with you. I just want to, you know, it, a lot of YouTubers like to produce videos talking about how great and glorious and how wonderful it is to be here, and it is. But in reality, it has this dark side too. There's just no getting around it. There's not as much crime here as there is in the United States. I guess if you look at it statistically speaking, if you use the math, there's probably more crime here than there is in the United States when you calculate it based on the number of crimes per 100,000 people. I hear about more horrendous crimes in the United States. Look at all the shootings. The United States is up over 250 mass shootings in this year alone. There hasn't been any mass shootings here in Ecuador except in the prison. Last time I heard, I think when I first came here, like 65 prisoners killed each other in a prison. We should give them all a medal. Another thing I want to talk about, people are coming here and buying CDs, investing in CDs. Please keep in mind, folks, that the insurance company here the COSIDI insurance, the Ecuadorian version of uh, FDIC, only covers you for $32,000 per bank per sector. So you come here with a couple of hundred thousand dollars and you want to invest it, think very carefully about uh, being strategic and put divide that money up in different banks, okay? 
I'm not saying that to, to warn you or make you think that you're going to lose your money. I don't feel that way at all. I'm the worst at practicing what I preach because I put all mine in one bank. It's not that much money. So be smart about that too, okay? Get advice from professionals. Talk to the bankers. Talk to the bank officers. Talk to your legal team when you get here. Go over and talk to the folks at Equisist. I'll be doing an interview with them very soon, uh, talking to Equisist to talk about legal issues here, legal issues with migration, immigration, getting your visa, and all this stuff. That'll be hopefully within the next week or so. Also, I wanted to let you know that right now there are a lot of protests going on in the country. Uh, people that are protesting in the way the government's handling some things and they're blocking roads. They're blocking roads, the major roads, like going from Quito to Monta, and they're very angry. They're, uh, the leader has been arrested, but I think I've heard that he might have already been released too. They were supposedly going to do this over the weekend, but they continue to do it throughout the week. Uh, they're blocking the highways outside of Cuenca as well. So if you're flying in right now, there, you may be delayed if you're, if you're traveling by car and trying to come to Monta. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you about, the uh, some people have asked me about where I get my uh, news, my local news. There's two newspapers, online newspapers, that I like to uh, keep tabs on. One of them is called Coinca High Life. I found out about it when I was in Coinca in January and February. I'll put a link to it in the description. It's a good newspaper. I think it's accurate. I, I, you know, I don't know what, what to say about it in, in terms of accuracy. I feel comfortable reading it. I don't feel like there's any reason to not believe most of this, the other stuff that's in there. And then the other newspaper is El Universal. It's a national newspaper, an Ecuadorian national newspaper, and it's published nationwide. I'll put a link to it in the description as well. Just about anything that I want to know about what's going on, I get from those two sources. There's a, there's a lady that interprets a lot of the language in Cuenca High Life, and I'm hoping that she's accurate with her interpretation. I feel okay with her, so just thought I'd tell you about that too. So that's really about it. It's a short video. I didn't. I just wanted to just throw those items at you, just uh, trying to keep you informed about what's going on around here. I, I do want to say one thing about something that's happening on this channel. One of my subscribers, a very gracious uh, gentleman, offered to send me a gift. I, I don't know why. I, I, I should have asked him what it was before he sent it even though I'm not complaining because I'm happy that he sent what he sent. Can't wait for it to arrive. I, I made, I, I, when, he, when he told me to send me a gift, I thought because of the discussion that I was having at that time, I was talking about the mouth guards and so forth, and I thought he was sending me a package of mouth guards, over-the-counter mouth guards that you can buy in the drugstores in the States. I don't think you can get them here too, but I don't know. And I thought, oh, that's great. Is somebody going to send me a mouth guard? So... I told him, I said, ship them to me through USA Valet and let USA Valet, you know, get it to me here. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, it'll be a minimal cost and it won't be an expense to him. And, you know, I'll take care of it and be ha happy and grateful. Well, it turns out that the kind gentleman sent me an Instant Pot. I love Instant Pots. If you never cooked with an Instant Pot, well, I think every kitchen in the world should have an Instant Pot. I'm, I think it's the greatest cooking system since sliced bread. But anyway, he sent me an Instant Pot. In order for me to get that through customs, because it's an electronic device, we had to declare value for it. And the way customs wants you to declare values, and so that they can determine what to charge for an import tax on it, they have to see a receipt for what it costs. So that's how I found out what I was getting. I had to write to this gentleman and say, listen, I need to see a receipt from Amazon to show the value of this so that we can pay the taxes on it. And no big deal. We were able to accomplish that, and I sent it to my shipper, USA Valet. They sent it on to Customs. It turns out that so far 
I've had to pay $70.30 out of my pocket for customs fees. It's been probably about four weeks since this all started, and the Instant Pot is still sitting at customs in Waikil. I've paid for this import fee, customs fees, handling fees, and I don't know if I'll ever get it. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to have to pay $10 a pound for shipping. That goes to USA Valet. I don't know what the Instant Pot weighs. I'm probably five pounds. It'll cost me 50 bucks. But anyway, I'm, I'm paying more to get it here than it was cost to buy. But I'm okay with that I'm, because I want this thing, okay? And But the reason why I'm even saying all this is because I want to thank everybody that wants to tip me and send me gifts and that the people write to me and ask me for PayPal and I don't I don't need any tips and I I I don't I don't need if I need anything I will get it somehow myself. I don't want you to think I don't appreciate it, but I sincerely do appreciate it. I'm saying that from the depth of my heart. But because of the fact that we had to pay import taxes on electronics. Now, if you want to send me a MacBook Pro, I won't complain about that. I'll pay the taxes. and But never mind. No. But anyway, don't do that. Please don't do that. Wait until you get here and then, you know, uh, buy me breakfast. Okay? It's my favorite meal of the day. I don't like to meet for beers. I don't like to go out for beers at night. And maybe I'll meet for a cup of coffee in the afternoon. But breakfast is... That's what keeps me happy. I'll be honored to meet you, and and I'll thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, as I was editing this video, I got an email, and I wanted to share it with you. It's a, it's actually a, it's not. I got an email about a comment that was replaced as a response to the video that I did with Blue Box Insurance, and it's 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 a good topic of discussion. So I want to just kind of touch on it because I don't really talk about this a whole lot. Here's the comment. This was great information. Listen twice. Still confused about the maximums on preconditions when the conditions exception expires. The only thing you didn't cover and might not be appropriate here is what a USA expat does with their Medicare. I'm not yet 65, but I soon will be. I'm still trying to figure out the alphabet of Medicare. Medicare A is free. B, you get charged for and all sorts of stuff for C, D, etc. Assume you were the age to be covered by Medicare before you left for Ecuador. If you are not planning on ever returning, I can see letting it lapse. But if you haven't made that decision, what plans are best keeping in mind if you delay coverage there is a stiff penalty when you do decide to sign up. For example, if you plan on having all your medical needs met in Ecuador, but return to the States to visit grandchildren and your kids, your Ecuador insurance won't cover you if something happens in the States. Any thoughts? Yes, I have thoughts about that. So let me tell you what I did. I canceled Part B. I, even if I do go back, I don't give a damn. I still canceled it. It's $170 a month. And when I go back, if the penalty is too extensive, I just won't have Part B. I'll get my medications and stuff from the VA. You don't lose your Medicare just because you moved to another country. And if I go back to the United States and visit, which I plan to do, I'll use Medicare when I'm there. I, I, I don't, Medicare comes with your Social Security. You know, I'm, not, I'm just not going to worry about it, you know, especially since it's just me in this world. Medicare Part B is expensive, and $170 is a lot of money here in Ecuador. So, but if you know when you when you make that when you start thinking about that decision to move and leave the country, and you need all the resources that you can get, there are some things that you may have to forfeit, and one of them could be Medicare Part B. If you have any doubts and you think that's going to be a problem for you paying for the penalty or whatever, if and when you go back, that's a decision you have to make. So. The, the, when, as far as the maximums on preconditions, they're like in my case, my pre-existing condition when I came here is is high blood pressure. I have to wait 24 months before I can be covered for anything that happens to me that's related to high blood pressure. If I had started buying my insurance 24 months 
when I came here, before I came here, and I disclosed that I had high blood pressure as one of my pre-existing conditions, the 24 months waiting period would have already expired, and when I came here, I would be covered for anything that happened to me related to high blood pressure. So I'm not real sure what you're talking about as far as maximums. You know, there depends on what policy you buy and how much deductible you have and what company you go with. I personally went with Confiamed. Lots of my friends here stick with IESS. But I'm telling you folks, IESS is having a problem with medications. So that's something to think about. That's all I got to say today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. I don't give a damn. It don't make any difference to me. I get paid whether you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Every bit of activity on this channel pays me money. So knock yourself out, okay? Thanks, folks. I love you, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Ciao. Thank <laughs> you.